Greetings, I, the War Owl, greets you, and welcome to another Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons. But don't worry, we're going to figure out what those reasons are. Our hero this time is Lord Liam, the X. He is a Silver 3 player. Oh no. Let's hear. We are venturing back into the Silver Leagues. What precious metal is uh, poised to double in value over the next three years? If you said gold, you're an idiot. It's silver. Buy silver today. Oh my goodness. Well, his favorite fish is... Uh, oh gosh, he just froze. Oh man. He just froze. Oh no. <laughs> Remember guys. Don't make any disparaging comments about these players. Be kind. They are making an effort to improve. Now let's figure out how much of a noob this guy is and check out the last round. We're going to watch this from a third person perspective here. And we're going to watch the absolute horror in his face as his friends die. Boom. Boom. I've seen things. Okay, so we put it down very low. He's frozen here for a bit of time. He's freaking out. He's like, my buddies. The dead man, the dead, what do I do? What do I do? There's a guy there! He pulls out a nade, um, getting shot, so he strafes out of the way, and this is where he goes for his shot. So this is just pretty much the only mistake here, I guess, with, besides not acting fast enough, but how is his shooting? Okay, so the main problem, and this is really simple, and this is something you can work on, um, Liam. So pretty much... All you gotta do to improve your game is realize that you cannot shoot accurately while you're moving. This is something for all you silver guys out there. As you noticed, Lord Liam did not stop moving. He thought just because he had the crosshair near the guy that the guy would die. But guess what, guys? This isn't Call of Duty. Shooting works very differently, and I have a number of tutorials to cover this topic um, that you guys might want to watch. I have a tutorial series to go over the, the basics of shooting in this game. And it just seems like Liam may be a little bit new and not understanding um, how the bolts work. Because there's no reason you should shoot when you're running around like that. However, crosshair placement wasn't that bad. He was a little bit to the left on the guy, but he corrected it. So it really has to just work on his movement control there. So I'll just let uh, Lord Liam here play the game. We'll watch some silver level gameplay here. Turn on your x-ray. And, um... Pretty much, he said this wasn't a pre-made team. And I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this exactly as it is here. Quote for quote. Well, watch out for Mr. Hamster there, Liam. Oh, no. He's dead. Anyway, I'm going to read this quote for quote. My favorite fish is a dead one. Not to eat, just in general. I have no idea what he means by that. Another thing I noticed there is that Liam has a ton of money. But he never buys uh, flashes or nades or anything. Like one round, he actually just had a like a Molotov or something. It's a little bit strange. Um, part of, of learning how to play this game, like pretty much half of this game, is nades and flashes, smokes, Molotovs, how to use them, when to use... Oh, okay, so I didn't even notice that before. He ran up and blocked Hulk, who was awping. Remember, guys, in Silver League, and this is gonna... You're, you guys are gonna be very happy that I pointed this out, because this happens a lot. This is sort of a pet peeve of mine as well. Never stand directly next to a guy when he's like going to engage an enemy because he's got a strafe He needs to strafe back or he needs to strafe out or something to avoid getting shot to shoot properly You Lord Liam the X could have gotten your teammate killed there Very easily by standing right next to him Also do not stand behind somebody if they're pushing into a room because they may need to back out of that room And you could block them Keep in mind, you block your teammates. If you see your teammates doing something, you have to be mindful of what they're doing. All right. And he also he also had another question here. He said, oh, there he goes. He blocked the poor guy again. Um, what to do, and he's dead. What to do when my team doesn't speak the same language as me? Well, he gets a shot. Here's what you do. I mean, there's only one answer to this question. What do you do when your team doesn't speak the same language? You have to learn the language. There's a number of online tools you can use. You could take a course. Um, you'll learn Russian in no time, man. You'll learn French in no time. I don't know what kind of language these guys are speaking. Let's look at their names and try and figure it out. No, I can't make it out from their names. So, don't worry about it. I, um, to speak with some people who play from Central America, South America, I've learned Spanish and Portuguese. Um, I've also learned French to uh, communicate with the French Canadians. So whatever region you're in, just make sure you learn every single language. It only takes about a month um, to learn. What am I? No, just queue with people you know. 
Last question, he said, where do I defend bombsite A from? And this is one I can hop in game and sort of show you guys. I think he's talking about here on Mirage, which is fun to get a map besides Dust 2. There's maps besides Dust 2 played in uh, Silver League. This is incredible. All right. Well, and Office, maybe? Dust 2 and Office, best maps ever. So he said, where to play bombsite A from? Let's just uh, watch this and we'll hop in game and give some tips. Alright, that was a weird place to play from, actually, that was Sandwich. I'll hop in game and explain sort of why not to play there. Standing out way in the open, that's a huge no-no. And, yes, he does get punished for it. So let's hop in game and talk about what went wrong there. Alright, so our buddy here, our hero for today, Lord Liam the X. He was playing it from up here inside a Sandwich. This is uh, kind of a scary position to play this from. Now, it's not a good position, and the reason is you cannot really take cover. This is the only place here that you can take cover from the apartments. You're super exposed when those terrorists try to push out here. Um, it's a scary spot. It's a place that when, when players are pushing in, you're generally going to be able to peek. It is only good as, like, a surprise position to get, like, a free frag as these players are running in. So I could actually see it being used usefully. But when you're playing with a team, when you're playing with a group of other people, it's not going to be as useful. Now, most of the time, you have three players playing this position, where one of them is watching uh, the connector area to make sure that nobody pushes you. Like, generally on this map, you're going to have one player in B, one player watching short A, one player middle, which is this player who is the third player playing A, because he can come over here, he can help from here as the terrorists are pushing in, and uh, he can also watch the connector. Now, um, then you're going to have two players inside of the site. Very common spot here is at the bottom of ladder. This is a very versatile position. It's a position that you see a player like Taz use this all the time, and he's really good at it. So if you want to learn how to play this position, I suggest watching Taz play. Um, that's of uh, Virtus Pro. So right over this box is like a headshot position as the terrorists are pushing in. You can always uh, smoke them out so that they do not push and delay their push for as long as possible and help you get intel and figure out where they are. And, of course, force them to make a decision. I would not go up here because, again, you can't you can't get out of here. You're stuck. Great part about this, this position is you can always hide from the different spots. You can sneak up here and catch the player going uh, this way off guard as well. You generally do not want to be peeking in there, though. You can avoid a lot of the flashes in here that are going to be thrown. And uh, generally, this spot is not going to be smoked out. So you're pretty much always going to be able to engage the player at Tetris. Gauge player pushing in here. It's a really nice, versatile spot. The next spot is going to be a player either playing somewhere inside of the site, um, behind the boxes, right here as well. You can watch three different positions from here. This is kind of a scary position, though, because you're sort of exposed from two different ones. And uh, also playing it over here from the connector so that you can watch inside of apartments. So a lot of people like to smoke off the uh this area so that they don't push in i don't like that because as you push in from a main it's easier to kill players the best thing in my opinion that you can do is smoke off apartments so they can't really push they can't peek they can't do anything and then all of your players can focus on this area until your smokes have cleared so then you don't have to worry about the apartments you can play some crazy spots like uh like right here for example where you're going to be exposed from apartments. Now let me get the op and let me show you some of the op positions because oping inside of a site Mirage is actually very difficult. Um, previously in Mirage, before this version of it, you would have an op like at CT, and you could play a position here. This box is so um, short that you are going to be seen from a player who pushes out at the apartments. So you could get picked by the player really easily, and you want to watch A main from here. Uh, if you watch apartments from here, you're just watching this spot. They can still peek different positions from apartments. They can still throw things out of there and be a, an otherwise just a nuisance. So you can duck here, but again, that limits your mobility. Um, at any point, you can jump up here. Look at connector, but again, you're super exposed. So pretty much anywhere that you want to play from, you're going to be super exposed. This box is a position that I actually really like to play. Because you can watch the connector if they're pushing, then move here, and you're not visible from connector. And watch these two positions. But again, you see the importance of smoking off that apartments. Because now I can watch this spot unhindered, I don't have to worry about anything. Move over here, I can watch this spot unhindered by anything, as long as I can't push out of that apartments. 
All right, so there's just a few places you can play from. What we saw Liam doing that was a little bit of a mistake was standing um, way out here in the open like this. And, uh, I mean, you always want to be able to take cover. And because he's here, he can't take cover. Like, where can he go? There's no boxes to hide behind. He's got to, like, run for it. Like, ah. Uh, and look at that. He keeps himself super exposed from the entrance here if he goes for that spot. If he runs over here, he's got, it takes a long time, super exposed from all over the place. So, yeah, Mirage A site is a difficult place to play because there's so many places you can get shot from. If Terra is set up properly and can move in um, from different positions at the same time, from the connector, from apartments, and from A main, it's going to be difficult to hold. And they also have a lot of different smokes that you can throw in as well. So, you got to be careful. You got to play it as a team and gauge as one. All right. So, I accidentally showed the Al Vision already in one of those things where I was talking about the languages. Well, that's okay. Here's the frags again for you here. Big thanks to Liam for sending this demo in, for his commitment to getting better at the game. I made it through a silver one, a silver matchmaking academy without super hardcore raging. Well, I did rage, but I edited that part out. The magic of editing has made me look like a good person. Thank you, folks, very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer.